right guys so we've got a no cooling call here on a residential so let's go take a look and see what's going on it's a little cool this morning it's about 50 something won't get up to a high of maybe 65 today which won't be till later today so let's see what they've got going on it's an older unit they said they might need a new one but let's go see what exactly is going on all right we got us a brand new looking goodman from probably 1990s everyone's saying it's dead it's gone let's just see if it ain't something stupid like a capacitor or a contactor and low on charge just those few small things so let's get this turkey open and see what we got in here people seem to love these residential videos i don't usually make them because it's going to be one of three things but if people enjoy it we're going to go ahead and do it whatever all right they've already pulled the disconnect here Take a look at this capacitor for starters. It looks like it might be swollen, but eh, maybe not. 30 on that one. Five on that one. It's ready for 30 and five, so we're fine on that. I don't think that's our issue. That's not good, is it? Now she said sometimes it runs, sometimes it don't. But when it does run, it doesn't cool very well. So, eh, before we do that, let's check, see if we got anything to ground real quick. Just kind of do a preliminary check here. Nothing there, and this is checking everything, motors and all. So nothing dead there. Let's go between it. Just see if we got some normal looking resistance. Great. Let's go do the motor and compressor at the same time. 45. Okay. Well, let's see what we get here. She's not starting. Sounds like lock rotor amps. Let's go to our fat wire here, which is our common. Fan runs. All right, so now there's that. If we're lucky, we'll have amperage. If we're not, we're screwed. Nothing. So might be a wire burned off at the compressor. So let's pop this top and take a peek-a-poo in there and see what we got. Pop the top. It's a Bristol less than a good crystal. So let's see if we can get this turd flinger apart here and see if we can check those terminals. They're not looking like they've got anything major wrong with them just yet. Oh, lucky there. Lucky there. We got less than desirables there. We got deplorables. Deplorable connections there. That's not good, is it? Nope, not good. Now, the question is, was they just loose? Let's see if I can get you in there. There we go. So we got a yeller. Yeah, I know. You can't see through well through my hand, can you? Well, wasn't designed very good for videography because they put the freaking suction line right in the way. So you get the yellow burned up there pretty pretty. Got the red kind of holding on and common completely torqued off. That's terrific. Now it does look like we've got some terminals there to work with. We're going to see if we can just salvage this turd. See if we can get her another couple hours out of this thing. We're gonna redo all of them because, boy, they did not. This is what I hate about Goodman. Nothing is serviceable worth a shit. 
you can't get into anything. Everything is like right in the way. I'll put this right there. Yes, they could have chose a different way to do it. They could have chose a different compressor. They're 90s units, which this is probably from the 90s. Let's take a look here. Uh, serial number, hard to read. Looks like it's from 2000s, possibly. Look at the serial number on this. It's got double zeros too, so 2000. So we're 22 years old. They're older units. This That's what most of the so-called old timers hate Goodman for because their design sucked. It was like they put it together with a bunch of leftover parts from a garage sale. And uh, man, that is just not cooperating, are you? I think it might be time for a new one. So here's why. B and kind of reddish. There we go. No room to get your hands in here to anything. There we go. That one was halfway halfway decent. That one might be jacked to the max erroneous. Yeah. See, that sucks because you're gonna be like trying to salvage this you could maybe maybe get a stub on that thing I don't know I don't know if I still have any or not I had some on the truck Let's see if we can get the linesman's on there and twist it back and forth and maybe get the uh, terminal off I think what I'm going to do is yank this stupid panel off because it's just anything but cooperating I don't know if we yeah we got very little of anything to work with here yeah the edge corner things are kind of gone those two there are okay so we could probably get away I mean she is not in good condition I hate putting one of those steak on kits on there they're not cheap brand new air conditioners not either we might be able to make that work that is such a crap connection. I'm gonna ask the lady what she wants me to do. Maybe like, give them the option. It's what my whole thing's always been. Do you want me to try to make this thing run or do you just wanna get a new one? What do you wanna do? It's our 22, the 22 is expensive. Hell, 410A is expensive. Everything's expensive now. Hey, all that free money had a cost, didn't it? So anyhow. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here with this. Let's ask the lady, see what she wants to do. Okay, so there's wires on the compressor that, uh, that's what the wires connect to on the compressor. Two, one of them's completely burned off. It's real rusted where it connects to. I can try to put new connectors on there. They'll probably burn off maybe anywhere from a few days to possibly my last year, year or two. Uh, they have some other connectors that go around the whole wire thing and can crimp down into it. And that might last you a year or two or three. But as you said, it's getting old. Yeah, it's past old. Okay, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it up to you to make the decision. Do you want me to try to make it run or do you want to just look at something newer? I wanna look at something newer. Okay, I can do that. Um, I didn't wanna waste a bunch of time running up any kind of yeah. bill without talking to you first. I don't wanna put any more money into it. If okay. it's only gonna work a year or not even a year. It's hard to say. No. What happens is, I mean, they, they get burnt on the end there and they just they don't have a good connection and then it heats up again and then burns off again. Uh, the other connector thing, sometimes they work good, sometimes they don't, but the metal's pretty rusted. So, and there's not a lot to clamp on it's, to. It's been a good unit. It really has. Yep, I mean. And it's, it's an off brand too. <laughs> yeah. It's a Goodman, I think. It looks like a Goodman anyhow. So that's, that's kind of they sell to everybody type thing. Something yeah. they sell it to Carter Lumbers and things like that. So Well, that worked. Out. The furnace they sold me was an off-brand, and I wasn't ever happy with that. The furnaces were a lot worse. It Air conditioning is pretty easy. It had a crack in, and I had to replace it. That little bulby thing that makes it heat, the heating thing. Oh, the igniter, I bet. Yeah, the igniter, that yep. thing. Yep, the hot storage igniter. I've been real happy with this furnace. Got a carrier? Whatever you guys yep, carry. Yeah, probably carrier. I'll go ahead and get this thing put back together, and then I'll be back in. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I gave her her options. She don't want to do it, so I could probably made it run. Well, the lady 
had no clue what they sold for nowadays and thought she could get a new one for two grand. Um, I've got some modified crimpers here that I'm going to try out. I've cut them because these were some cheap ones before I bought my Kleins. Ryan from Hughesman HVAC gave me this idea. And they're not as cool as his because I kind of grinded them down a little more than what I probably should have. But we're going to see if this works very well. So let's go ahead and get some new connectors on there. See if we can get her some cooling going for next week because it's going to be in the 80s. And get that slit on there. Let's see how this does. I usually like going from the other side, but let's see if we can go from the back side on this one. Kind of pinches it down like it should. Kind of rolls that barrel connector in there. Kind of gets a pretty good crimp on it there. It's not coming off. So we got that there like that. We can trim the excess there off like that. That's not coming off. It's that's pretty pretty tight there. It does a pretty good crimp right there. These other ones, I don't trust them. They crimped that the same way. See, so they put it on the one side. So let's go ahead and chop him off too. I don't want to take a chance. Yeah, we've trimmed that one a little bit better, so it kind of... Yeah, this wire here is a little less wire to work with. A lot less uh, wire in there. Maybe I should have... Yeah, I should have pulled it over, stripped it over a little bit. Tell you what we'll do. Let's strip it longer. We doubled it over there, so let's see if that gives us a little more to work with. They don't give you a lot to crimp onto here, though. That's something kind of stinks. Yeah, it feels a little bit better. And for whatever reason, they really didn't. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not going nowhere. Stray wires there. Let's see if we can clean up those connectors a little bit. It's like a turd in the toilet bowl. You know what we should probably do real quick before I do any more after I've already wasted this much time. Let's check the resistance of this compressor. I did tell her, you know, we don't know. I don't know how much prices are. I don't freaking price this stuff. And I don't know what our availability is. So let's check her. Resistance here to ground, nothing there, nothing there. One thing bad about not using the GoPro or the DJI is I don't have a tripod handy. So I'm going to go ahead and check it good with my hands and I will check with you and let you know here in a second. I'm not able to get that stupid thing on there. It has no edge to connect to. We're going to resort to this. I'm going to put one on for now and see if that at least gets it running. If so, then we'll continue on. We've got it in there. We've got two regular ones on there that are replaced. The one's not obviously the same. We're going to run that all the way up to here. That way we don't destroy this. That way if it doesn't work, I'm not wasting this and I can use it like it's new. And uh, get on our merry way. Cut it together there. Got a new crimp on there. See if this thing runs before I waste any more time on it. See what it does. Let's be all safety conscious here. Oh, look at that. And the motor's the next thing going out. That's nice. God, I love it. <laughs> Lord. Well, you know what? It works. She'll have air conditioning. Let's go ahead and get this thing together and check the charge. Alright, both caps are missing the rubbers out of them, which like we all know, the cap's only so good. Unless it's a brass solid cap, it's not going to stop any leakage. But it definitely don't help not having it. See where our suction pressure's at. Hopefully, we can get some decent 
decent numbers here. We're running 33 a degree evaporator, which is great for as cold as it is out here. I don't even know if I want to connect to this liquid side because it's just waste and refrigerant. It's not bad. Wow, look at that. getting it hot enough and melting it and sucking it in there. Suction line's cold. Check the superheat. You know this don't have a TXV. Ain't no way in the world this thing has a TXV. Superheat's dropping. It's probably overcharged or bad airflow, neither of which would surprise me. The filter's new. As I can tell you right now, it's overcharged. <laughs> or poor airflow. The system's on its last terminal for a leg it works man she had no cooling she has cooling now capacitor's fine contactor looks like hell but it's not really burnt and unfortunately when you think you can get an air conditioner for two grand it's you know i'm gonna try to keep their costs down as much as possible it's worked this many years hasn't blown up yet probably the reason why the terminal's burned off between loose connections and just age and probably starting hard i would say this one here was officially beer king and cold is probably how it was charged it's these videos where I'm working on equipment where people get pissed off and start being judgmental and it's like, you don't have a clue. You, you don't know the backstories on this stuff. Look at that. We're all the way down to four degrees. It's, it's overcharged. I'm not gonna be able to redo or dock work. I'm not gonna go through static pressure. Sometimes you just can't go through and do all that stuff. If people don't wanna pay the money, you can't do it. You just get it running and you get out the door. Trying a 35 degree evaporator with as cool as it is outside. It is definitely overcharged. What the heck? Let's go ahead and throw on the, the liquid line here. It's not like we're going to lose any refrigerant at the point where we need to worry about it. 80 some degree liquid temp. What was our official temperature? I think we were like 55 when I got here. So 69, 79, 80. We're, we're doggone close. We aren't over by a bunch, but we are slightly overcharged there when your superheat is right at 5.5 we could remove just a touch let's go inside and look at the furnace so we've got a nice five inch filter duct working horrible it's all spider trunked well let's just take out a little bit we'll blow it in a bottle 49 degrees there on that let's see what a return is uh, no, I still, I, if, if, if you want it to work right, you got to give me a second here. 54 degree wet bulb. I got to check your, uh, I just probably about another five minutes and I'll get you going. I just want to make sure it's right for you because I have a feeling that, you know, we probably going to get, get through the rest of the summer with it. I would love that. I don't have the money to spend. There I you go. take out a loan. Yeah, and I don't want you to have to do that if you don't need no, to. I don't want to either. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to make sure it's working good for you and then you don't have to do that. So the prices go up, but when you're retired, you I know. get so much. I know. I'm going to make sure everything's right. I doubt it. I'll probably never be able to retire. I'll just try to fall off a roof and die. <laughs> so we're at 54 degrees. 50 degree wet bulb, 54 degree wet bulb. Let's look that up on the chart here. With a 54 degree wet bulb and 59 degree outdoor temperature, we're looking at about 12.6 degrees superheat required. And we are 36 degree evaporator, 35 degree it's liquid uh, suction temp. So we need to remove a little bit. So go ahead and grab our tank. We'll take a little bit out. Coming up there close to that 12 mark, checking amp draw. Fan is 1.9, usually it's about 1.1. Check that uh, compressor common. We're running at 6.5, that's not bad. Run terminal, 4.8, 4.5, and 5 amps. And the start terminal, which is our yeller, is hard to get to, 4.3. So we're not looking too bad. There's your 12 degree superheat. Hopefully it hangs in there and don't go stupid the other direction, which is always the case that happens with superheat. It never wants to slowly go in. It either goes way past it or way above it. We are looking a lot better than what it is. Generally, your superheat's gonna be a lot higher in this colder weather, uh, all based off the wet bulb there. But it's looking a lot better. I didn't remove much. It holds there. I am happy as a cucumber in the refrigerator. 
33 degree evaporator. We're not running uh, real under freezing area, especially with the house as uh, cool as it is. The outdoor ambient, like I said, is 59, so 69, 70, 90, 80. So we're only 20 degrees over ambient. That's a little scary there on that part. That looks like that's a little over or a little under. But like I said, it's an orifice system. You really don't go by much. Superheat's hanging in there at 14.9. I am going to say we are good. We're going to dump back in what we've got left in the hoses. It's came back down around that 12 mark, so I'm happy with that. We're going to leave it there. Let's go in and get the remainder of the things picked up here. I got to fill out the bill yet. I got to put some new caps on and I'll be done. Got some different caps here. I keep uh, ones that I remove that are still have rubber seals and that way I don't have to charge for them. It's one of those things where you're trying to keep it a little cheaper for an older lady that's retired and stuff like that, you know? Gonna do what you can do to help people out. It'll come back. So we got that one up and going for the lady. Like I said, she didn't have a lot of money to put into this thing and uh, did as best a job as what I could with what we had to work with. It, you know, you don't know people's situations. You're just trying to save them save them some money and get things going and it's not just your traditional i don't want to spend it it's i don't have it and what do you do you got to do something to help these people out i mean within reason which means go on an extra mile do all the things that nobody ever seems to do for me when i hire them to do something and uh just actually put some effort into it so that's what we did today we got that one going we're gonna uh, do that we're gonna run some other service calls here but that's going to wrap this one up. If you guys enjoyed it, you know what to do. Till next time people, we will sit you on the, yeah. Till next time people, we will see you on the next one. Later.